Before Unity 6 was released, Unity 2023.2 finally introduced a canvas shader graph option. So in this video, we're going to make an animated health bar using shader graph. And in case you're new to health bars, I'll also show you how to animate lowering the health bar in the simplest, most effective way possible. Ready? Let's go. If you've ever tried using a sprite shader graph for UI elements, then you'll know that the huge drawback of this was no masking, which essentially makes it useless for UI except for the most basic setups. Now you can simply create a new canvas shader graph. And just by sampling out the main text and plugging in the color and the alpha, and already just with that, you can see that the masking is working as it should. So knowing that we can do this, let's make a health bar that's a little more fun than just a red rectangle. And by the way, the setup I'm about to show you is my favorite way of setting up health bars in my games, just because it's the most flexible and lets me use whatever graphics I want. And let me show you what I mean by that. Here I have this square sprite with rounded corners. And in my sprite editor, I'll go ahead and nine slice it so that I can expand the width and height of the health bar without stretching the rounded corners. Now let's create a new game object to hold our health bar. And in there, we'll create a new image, call it health bar color. And now let's plug in our sprite here and expand the width and height a bit. There, so as we said, we keep our nice round corners until we change it to filled mode, which is actually what we need. And when we do that, it gets all kinds of messed up because filled mode can't use our slicing. So what we're gonna do instead is, let's just change this back to sliced. We're gonna duplicate this, but this time we're gonna change the image to just be a normal square, which you can find by clicking here, which shows hidden items. Now we'll add a mask component and make sure we click do not show the mask graphic. And let's make our color object a child of this mask object. Let's call it health bar fill. And now we'll change this one to be our filled image. And in our code, we'll adjust the fill of this game object instead of the colored one. Okay, next let's duplicate this mask object and rename it to health trail and its child to health bar trail. What this is gonna be is a nice white bar that kind of trails behind our main one, which you'll see really soon. Now again, duplicate this health bar trail here, but bring it up so that it's just a child of our health bar game object. And we'll make this one slightly gray because this is going to be our background. And finally, let's make a border. We'll duplicate the background and we'll add 50 to the width and 50 to the height or whatever you want. Okay, so we're all set up. Now let's create a nice health bar effect in shader graph. We're gonna create a new canvas shader graph and open it up. So a few properties that we're gonna need. We'll need a float called scale, and we'll give it a range between zero and 50, and we'll default that to 20. Health color one is going to be a soft red. Health color two is going to be a much darker red. And we'll also make a vector two called twirl offset speed, defaulted to one on the X and zero on the Y. And just like with any sprite shader graph, we'll create a texture 2D property called main text. And let's bring that in and sample it. So we're going to use a gradient noise as the basis for our health bar animation. And we can go ahead and plug in the scale here. Now to get this more interesting looking, let's use a twirl node and plug that into the UV. And to get this animating, let's add a time node and we'll multiply it by our twirl offset speed and plug that output into our offset. And I'm gonna slow this down so that this video doesn't make people sick. I'd like to get another twirl going in the opposite direction. So let's plug this into the offset of another twirl node, but let's make the strength minus 10 instead of 10. And that can go into the UV input of another gradient noise and we'll use the same scale there as well. So to combine colors together, we multiply them. So now this will combine with our health color too. And for our health color one, let's plug this into a one minus node so that it inverts and combine that with health color one. 
Now these two I don't want to multiply together, a lot of the color will get washed out because of all of the darkness here, but since black represents zero, we can just add these together to fill the dark patches in both. And finally we need to combine this result with our actual texture, so we multiply. And plug that into the color, and the texture's alpha can go into the alpha. Okay, now let's create a new material from this and apply it to our health bar color image. And let's just make sure that this one is at the bottom so that it renders on top of everything else. All right, now we have a nice looking health bar. I did change around a few of the values until I got something that I liked a little bit more. Now, if you want to know how to smoothly drain it with code, let's install the DoTween package. It's free and I'll leave a link down below. Once you've done that, create a script called health bar, and we'll attach it to our health bar and we'll open it up. So we're going to add the UI namespace and the dotween namespace. And to get this up and running quickly, I'll go ahead and add the input system namespace as well. So we're going to need a reference to our health bar fill image and our health bar trailing fill image which are those two mask objects that we set up at the beginning. We're also going to set a trail delay, and we'll need health, so let's set it to 100. We'll also need to track our current health as well. In awake, we'll make our current health be equal to our max health. And in update, if we press the space bar, we'll drain our health bar. So how we'll actually do that, let's just go ahead and say that we'll take 10 damage every time we hit the spacebar. First, we need to set our ratio so that we know what to set our fill images to. And then we'll create a sequence with dotween. First, we'll do our health bar fill image down to the ratio amount, and we'll do it in 0.25 seconds. Now I'd like to add a little delay after this, so we'll say sequence.append interval, and we'll plug in our trail delay there. Then to add to the sequence again, we append it, we use do fill amount down to the ratio amount, and we'll do it in 0.3 seconds, and we'll use the same type of easing again. And then we play the sequence. Oh, and for good measure, let's make sure that our fills get filled up all the way in awake for both. And that's it, it smoothly animates down and has a nice white trail following behind it as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel, our Patreon supporters get access to the source files for every tutorial ever made on this channel, so head on over there if that's something that you want to do. See you next week, bye.